All right, so I think this time, as we wrap up and as we close, um, I think I'm going to do it in the reverse order of how we normally do these things. So I think I actually want to do the thank yous and the closing logistics first, and then we'll talk about sort of a, not so much a summary, but really what did this opportunity mean that we had together, and President Hemisaf will say farewell also. So let's dispense with the closing uh, logistics and some thank yous first. First and foremost, you will receive an evaluation form via email. I actually think in this morning's update email there was a link to it. You will receive that via email. And it's really important to us that you share your feedback about your experience at Liberal Arts Illuminated. So if you could take some time, either this afternoon or on the plane, or while it's still fresh in your head, and share that evaluation, complete that evaluation, that would be very helpful to us. Um, so we look forward to your feedback. Several of you have asked, is this something we'd consider doing again? And it, it will depend on what, what the feedback is. And is it useful? Is it contributing to the conversation and the dialogue? Um, and Michael wants me to say, and is it financially feasible? I can just tell. That's what he, <laughs> which is important, and it's, it, it's a good question. And so, um, right? Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> um, this conference, Liberal Arts Illuminated, is intended to reach the widest possible audience. So the conference materials, including speaker bios, presentation slides, video recordings of the sessions, will all be made available in the next few days on the conference website. So if you go back and you don't remember something, or if you chose one concurrent session this morning and you were hoping you could see the other, all of that will be available in our digital comments. So give us a couple of days to get it uploaded. As Margaret said, if you were taking photos of Rick's slides this morning or someone emailed and asked for that PowerPoint, all of that will be uploaded shortly. In addition, we will publish a post-conference publication to capture the essence of the conference and really to illuminate a path for you to share what you've learned in both meaningful and actionable ways. Because this isn't the end. This is the end of our time together, but it can't be the end of the conference and the dialogue. So for this post-conference document, rather than simply providing a recap of conference proceedings, we're intending to elevate the content of the conference by providing action steps, talking points, and to give you tools to help you guide conversations on your campuses and in the media. So again, this isn't what the post-conference document won't just be a recitation of proceedings. We've had a conference um, scribe, Dana, who I'm sure is in the room. Oh, there she is. She's been doing an ongoing transcript. And our goal is to continue to elevate the content of the document and to help you lead these conversations on your campus. Um, we want ev all of us to present the case for the liberal arts with vibrancy, with potency, and with consistency. And so we will provide that to you. And information about that post-conference document will come to you via email, and it will also be updated on liberalartsilluminated.com. I, I need to restate the thank yous. I know pre-tornado we talked about the thank yous and the important people a little bit, but I need to list some names. And there's one person on the planning committee that you all have not necessarily all seen in public that I want to call out as well, but I, I won't do this with everyone. You all heard from Paul Sirkvenick from the Minnesota Private College Council. Paul is there. Paul, thank you for your service on the planning committee. One very quiet person on the planning committee, but really the, the functioning half of my brain is Catherine Inc., Chief of Staff for the College of St. Benedict. There, there she is. So Catherine um, is a stellar partner and is a co-visionary for this. And she's quiet and in the background, but she is, she is um, my better half of my, of my brain. So thank you to Catherine. Jonathan Green introduced Rebecca Chop last night in one of the most thoughtful histories of the liberal arts that I've heard. And he's been great spirit. And I'm grateful to Bobby for his role on the planning, uh, to Jonathan for his role on the planning committee. And Bobby Hackett is right there, who brings a great energy and is a great representative of what's called Bonner Love. Um, and we share that Bonner Love here. Deborah Humphreys did a great job moderating, was stellar in the communications piece. I don't know if Deborah, she had to leave. Thanks, Emily. Um, Deborah's a great colleague from AACNU. 
Richard Ice is our provost. Um, Richard is back there. I'm grateful to Richard. Um, several of you heard from him. I believe this morning he was working on moderating a session. And of course, Michael and I are always grateful to Richard. Andy Lounder has been critical on our planning committee in terms of ensuring the trustee voice was present. And when I think about the mix of people in this room, having trustees and members of the business community was critically important. And Andy really made that, made that happen and has been a great participant on our planning committee, as has John Lawler. So I said to John Lawler, who may have left, he may have left, but he wrote a blog piece on Monday sort of previewing this conference. And it made me get chills. He is someone who has that depth of passion for the liberal arts and that amount of thought. I'm not going to say much about John McGee because you've met him. Um, <laughs> what am I going to say? I mean, he's just, I said to the group in our session earlier, he's, he is John McGee. He's the same way all the time. And that is a sheer delight. Um, and I mean that genuinely to work with him. So here's someone that I need to mention because he didn't do a group introduction. So a lot of people did not see Amit Mrig, who is there. And Amit, if you could stand for a moment, I just need to talk about you for a second. Amit, boy, that was quick. Amit is the <laughs> president and CEO of Academic Impressions. And Amit is in many ways the unsung hero of Liberal Arts Illuminated because Academic Impressions did all of the registrations for this. So if you registered through liberalartsilluminated.com, it was Amit and his staff that made that possible. So can we give him a very special thank you for, for what he did? So thank you, Amit. I, I wanted to be sure the group knew the effort that you put into this. Um, Georgia Nugent, who was delightful on the panel, I think Georgia had a flight as well, whose laugh alone brings energy in, and who I support her Einsteinian, a word I'd not heard until yesterday, perspective on many, many things, and that, and she's been great. She was a member of our planning committee. Emily Esch, who is the, um, the director of our common curriculum, who's leading a curricular revision and who is doing so thoughtfully, carefully, and at all deliberate speed. I, I have never been so admiring of someone as I am, Emily Esch, and her, her partner in crime, Barb May, who's back there, who's co-leading co that effort. Emily served on our planning committee. And then last but surely not least is Tammy Moore, who is there in the corner. And Tammy is our chief marketing communications officer. And she worked on the material, so the look of the materials was critically important. And again, it, it wouldn't, we, none of us would be here without Margaret Arnold's work. So if you've said to me over the course of the past 72 hours, the hospitality has been amazing. A lot of that's our Benedictine nature, but the logistics living that Benedictine hospitality is Margaret Arnold. So if we could <laughs> recognize Margaret. And of course, all of the staff at St. Ben's and St. John's, and again, I have to call out facilities, Advancement offered up their staff. That's our Advancement staff who've been directing you and driving golf carts. Um, who've ex the, these folks who've extended Benedictine hospitality receive my, my great gratitude as well. One last logistic thing, and then I'll, I will wrap up. Um, lunch today will be on your own, and there are a couple of options. If you're staying at St. John's for a stroll, as Michael invited you to do, the refectory or the reef is the dining center here at St. John's, and that's open and available. If you're taking the link or driving back to St. Ben's to check out, the Goretzky Dining Center is also available, and the food is great at both locations. So you can certainly take advantage of that if time allows. Um, I just want to close by saying that it has been a genuine pleasure to learn and to listen, to laugh, and to even be locked in with you over the past few days. Uh, in September of 2014, I mused to my now board chair, Terry Dolan, who was with us yesterday, that it would be great if we could create an environment wherein those of us committed to the liberal arts and liberal learning could come together and talk about the value of our work. And Terry, um, who's an employee of US Bank, gave the initial grant to make this happen. So he has my, my great gratitude. Um, and it was that 
funding. So be careful what you wish for, because we got that initial funding. I thought, oh, well, now I've got to do something. But it was that funding and that planning committee and my partner and President Hemisath um, that made this happen. And that planning committee, again, you provided the energy and the wisdom and the insight. We met about a year ago this week here to plan this meeting, and, and I, I couldn't be happier. But to be honest, Liberal Arts Illuminated would not have happened without all of you, without the 215 people who registered for the conference. And it would not have worked if we had not been honest about our limitations and open about our challenges. And it wouldn't work if we weren't open to inviting new voices into the dialogue. And so the fact that there's a diversity of institutions here really matters because we have a shared interest. But most importantly, it won't work if we don't do something. If we go back to our separate corners and do nothing, then we had a nice time, but it didn't work. So my plea to you is to do something. Allocate resources, gather and use data, talk to students and faculty about their understanding of the liberal arts. I don't know what spoke to you over the past two days, but I hope something did. And I hope whatever spoke to you results in you will do something to move forward our sector and our passion for the liberal arts. So I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. And I unquestionably believe in our value as, as liberal arts institutions, um, but I also believe that we are vulnerable if we don't act. And our outcomes will be so much better if we act together. It will be better for our institutions, it will be better for our students, <laughs> and it will be better for our democracy. So if we don't do something to live into the loftiest of our goals, then I feel like, I will speak only for myself, but I've then become complicit in the problem. So we have to do something to live into the lofty goals Andrew Del Banco set out for us. And as we do this difficult work, let us take solace in the fact that we don't have to do it alone. We brought 215 people together in central Minnesota, and we can stand together to do that work. So I'm going to close my section with a quote, and, and some of you who work here have heard this quote. It's one that I used in my first speech on campus as president-elect, and it's a quote from one of the sisters of the Order of St. Benedict. And I will close with this. Sister Dolores Duffner wrote, Many of us have learned to value self-reliance. Most of us would probably say that being independent is good and being dependent is undesirable. But there is a middle way called interdependence, and it may be the only way forward in our rapidly shrinking world. Migrating geese show us the value of interdependence when they fly in a V formation. We've known for a long time that the position of the lead goose is rotated often because it's the most tiring position. More recently, we've learned from scientists that each goose positions itself and times its wing beats to catch the rising air from the bird in front of it. In this way, geese can fly a long distance, avoiding flight fatigue by using the least energy possible how might we humans, sensitive to the movement of those around us, learn to synchronize our movements with theirs, advancing by collaboration rather than competition? And that's my hope for us in the liberal arts, that together, utilizing the strength and passion and power of each other, that we can illuminate the liberal arts. Thank you very much. follow a goose story like that. <laughs> Just very briefly, my thanks for all of you for joining us. Um, this conference wouldn't have worked if you all hadn't chosen to show up. You get, took three days out of your summer, and as beautiful as Central Minnesota is, and you, know, you didn't get a, wouldn't get a chance to experience a tornado at home, probably. Um, <laughs> that's three days out of your summer, and the emails didn't stop. Whatever you're doing at home didn't stop either. But, you know, I appreciate, we appreciate the fact that you came and joined us. And um, 
uh, on this day as we're closing this conference, um, I'm feeling a lot more hope than angst. Um, and that's because of you all. The, the fact that we have such great people working in this sector who understand deeply the meaning and value of the liberal arts makes me completely confident that this sector is in good shape going forward. We have work to do, the challenges are real, but what we offer our students, what we offer the society and the world is uh, incredibly valuable and I leave this conference with great hope because of the great colleagues we have out there doing this good work for us all over the country and even around the world. So thank you so much, have a safe trip home and we look forward to seeing you again at various academic meetings, conferences and who knows, maybe back in central Minnesota sometime. So thank you so much. <laughs>